operating servers, uh, that type of um, equipment that we would purchase. And then just the other question, is it possible to do this a two-year phase in, like we like to do? Yes, absolutely. I think that all of these options that are here are topics that came up from the board in the discussion, and it can be a mix of these type of things. I, um, if we want to do some uh, technology infrastructure this year and, and the next year with the, with the goal of moving to a one-to-one -one initiative, we can certainly pace it out. Same thing with the security cameras. It's something we can certainly pace that out as we upgrade. Um, so you'll open up and then I will try to get a consent. Well, Jeff Wan is as a technology chair. I think Jeff Wan sees yeah. on number seven. <clears throat> I think the, the board was really wise in hiring a superintendent to replace Dr. Palestis, uh, who is progressively minded, uh, who speaks fluently and strongly of technology and the need to bring technology into this district. Uh, I think it's one of the great advantages and our luck to have Mr. Garcia. And I would love the opportunity to arm him with that money to progress our school district forward in terms of technology. We are woefully behind other districts. We just are. And I don't like to have to say it, but we are. And that infrastructure <coughs> is to catch up to what other schools have. If we want to keep saying that we are the best and we are excellent, we have to keep up. And the longer it takes us to keep up, obviously, not only the further we are behind, but the more expensive it'll be down the road to compensate for what we haven't been spending all these years on technology. Our kids are growing up in a 21st century world where using computers as, as something to learn and to work with and to problem solve <coughs> is something that should be perfectly natural to them. And it's incumbent on schools to be providing that type of education for them. This is money that goes directly, directly to student learning and student achievement. And I implore the board, please keep this in. Okay. Um, I agree with you on that. Just, just so everybody's clear, we're, we're putting this in the budget, the special threes, but, you know, just because we put it in the budget and we want to do it doesn't mean we have to do it. I mean, if, if we have... If we have a, an issue, I mean, some the idea is to put this stuff into the budget, to put all these things in the budget. Um, and when I'm thinking more about the, um, the special threes, if it blows up with the borough, then the money might not get spent. If the, if the chief says, listen, you need to wait to do this, then we might not have to spend it. So we're putting in a budget, we plan on spending it, but if something goes awry, it's not just like, oh, it's spent, and we're not going to, you know, the money's down the drain. Um, that being said, I'm going to open it up to the public. Do you mind if I just add one? Yeah, I sure. just want to just end here with my comments with looking at the process again. Because I think the process is important. So what we are doing tonight is really a continuation of what we started to do several weeks ago. We started with committee meetings. We had one full board meeting. Tonight is our second meeting. But as we move forward, keep in mind that we have two board meetings coming up. We have Monday of next week, and then uh, we will then refine it further. There will be additional conversation. Hopefully we can get close to a consensus tonight. We have a shared service committee meeting coming up on April 16th, and then we also have on April 26th final submission to the county. So I just want everybody to know there's still time to deliberate to accept comments from the audience and board members but the process is moving along I think in a very fair way board members have had a lot of input really into the formation of this that will continue but still we have another full meeting on Monday and then we'll see what happens with the shared service meeting and then we have that final one on April 26th. So I think we're in good shape in terms of making sure we have the information that we need. All right, thank you. Okay, members of the public, questions, comments? Just yeah. state your name to the table. Sure, Craig Miller, 5 Rampo Terrace. One thing I am
kind of concerned with overall is this is your wish list. I know you want everything on the wish list. And I understand it's for the kids and you want everything for them. And you want to be the best. I also look at the other side where other schools, and I'm going to go back to a couple of meetings, where other schools have lights on their football fields. Where's Fairland? Fairland doesn't have any. I know you have it set up for it. When's the lights come in? Um, as far as the borough with a zero percentage, yes, I go to all the budget meetings. Don't see anybody else there. Um, I don't hear from the Board of Ed side on vehicles when vehicles are going to be, need to be replaced. Or do we have a year or two? Or do we, can we, you know, I don't see that here. I just, see this is what you want put on the budget, boom. Um, I am concerned with the security because when I go to the board meetings at the high school, to me the high school is way too open. I don't know how you can control that, but at night there's no security, at least from what I can see and anybody can walk on in anywhere. Um, I do feel that a lot of these items can be phased in. It doesn't have to be done tomorrow. Whether you wait a year or two, that's just you know, my feeling, because you know, I would love to have everything done tonight, but I know in my budget, I can't. So just looking into phasing in on stuff, I would um, more or less go with that, and I agree with the school safety director. Let him look over your whole building, your whole st structure. Let him make recommendations. I think what you're doing is when you upgrade all the cameras, you're patching. Because somebody else may come and say, you don't need them. And that's it. Hey. Uh, David Trattner, 310 Allison Street. Um, I have a couple of, of questions, points. Um, in terms of the minimum budget, um, what was cut to help offset that, or would that have been even higher? I'm just curious of that, because I mean, this is a year again where before any of this was introduced, you've already raised taxes and averaged $9 a month, or probably more for a lot of people. So was there any thought into maybe offsetting that 1779 in terms of cutting things, and if so, what was cut, or sure. could that so, have been even higher? So the last uh, presentation that we did, we showed the pie chart, and the reason the pie chart, I think, is pretty effective is that 76% of the budget is salaries and benefits. So when we're looking at what are we cutting, and we're cutting utility costs, we're cutting supplies, overall, and this is a conversation Natalie and I have all the time, because I'll be cutting $40,000 out of Natalie's curriculum budget, but the reality is when you look at what does it really move the dial for $40,000, so the expenses we have control over, we absolutely um, cut where we can. We, we keep looking for ways of saving on silly things like phone lines and fax lines. I mean, we did a huge audit of all of our phone lines last year and, and cut about $10,000 out of our uh, telecommunications lines. Um, but again, $10,000 on the grand scheme of things, it's not something that you're necessarily going to see. It takes three hundred thousand dollars to sure. move one dollar. Uh, we also are always looking for revenue opportunities, um, seeking out those grant opportunities, seeking out if we can take a tuition student, we take a tuition student in. Um, I think we try to have as fiscally responsible of the budget as we possibly can. What our bare bones is reflective of are things like health benefits increases sure. that we really don't have much control over. Everybody's being hit with that, the employees and. Um, and the board as well. But how does that minimum budget um, compare year over year in terms of how that went up last year, the minimum budget? The minimum budget? Well, you know, like that, that number last year, what was that number? Well, I can tell you that the 15% health benefits increase, that was $1.4 million, and our general tax levy that we can raise is $1.7 million, and we're only getting $3 million of state aid. Things like that, the health benefits increase that we don't have control over, those are things that really do have a huge increase on the budget. So you're talking about looking at last year to this year, we had to absorb $1.4 million. Clearly, we were able to absorb that by cutting areas that we could cut, eliminating things that we don't need to, to have. Um, 
So I hope that answers. I mean, do we know? Do we know what it was last year? You're talking about monthly tax increase? Yeah, so I'm, I'm last curious. Last year's monthly tax increase was twenty dollars. But I mean, what was the the the, the minimum? Lap, I mean, is that about the same every year? Has it been about that's it, whatever it's about five million dollars or whatever that is equates to in, in terms of uh, whatever that no, number the is? Year that, previously, before that, it was twelve dollars. Yeah. Before that, it was nine dollars. Um, I think it fluctuates. So is that going to, I mean, it doesn't sound, that doesn't sound like it's fluctuating. That sounds like it's going up every year. Is that something we can expect that no, that minimum not, will go up every year? No, it's going up every year. No, he's, talk, he's talking, I'm sorry, about the 1779. Yeah, that, I'm talking about the apples to apples. Like, what, what, what was the... Last the, year's base budget, I don't have the answer to that question, but I can certainly get back to you. That would be great, because, I mean, that's, yeah, I, I think that's something that, you know, I, I think when, you know, just talking to people about... 0% from the county, 0% from the town, uh -huh. and then, you know, you can start it, you know, at 17 almost $18 before you even add anything. I think that's, you know, well, a, a concern to a lot of people. Just talking about increases, we, like, again, what do we know? $76 million in salaries and benefits. That's a good question. Yeah. So, you're talking about a $100 million budget on very basic math. No, understood. $76 million salary. I want to say something about the county budget, though. They didn't raise any taxes, but they raised their user fees by $11 million. So that's 2% of their budget. So they say there's no tax increase. They're right. But if you go to the park, you get charged more services that they charge in the town, you get charged more. So somebody's paying an increase. So basically, they're, they're better at spinning than you guys are. At the <laughs> yeah. And a borough. It's part of the game. game I, borough, I, I don't know the borough budget because I haven't read anything about it, but my understanding that they have $13 million surplus. I mean, surplus that just sitting there. So, um, and you're right. I mean, it, it would be great if everybody could have a zero budget. But no, I, okay. So I guess my next question is, and you know, um, Dr. Blessed, you made a great point about like you can't, you know, reaction to everything that's happened. You can't panic and buy everything. But I feel like this is that because I, I think the one thing you talked about is going to the experts. So you, it's great that number six, you've talked about hiring a school safety specialist director a person who can make recommendations on whether special threes are necessary in the elementary schools or is bringing an armed person into, into seven elementary schools, is that too much or is that not enough? I haven't heard you guys talk about what, what is the case for or against besides it just sounds like we have to protect them. I understand what Cindy's saying. Do we care less about the elementary school students? And I think that's kind of a, like, it, it's really not, not, not a comparable thing. Um, well, no, no, I understand, I understand the emotional part of this. But the, but the, emotions but when a staff member it is emotions. Saying, it's absolutely emotions. But the logical part of it is recommendations. It, it, no, that's what I'm asking. Like what? Like I haven't heard you talk about. Like hey, you know, some national board or somebody says, hey, we should have armed guards in elementary schools, or we should have security, you know, greeters in each building. But the one thing we haven't talked about is, you know, you're going to hire a specialist who's going to come in here and might say, you know what, that's overkill. We shouldn't be doing that. We well, should be doing this. But that's what I'm saying. But instead of waiting for the expert to make the recommendation, we're doing exactly what Dr. Melissa said we shouldn't be doing, which is, okay, let's get everything, let's buy no, everything. No, they didn't say that at all. Well, no, no, I have exactly what he said. He said no, no, I know what he said, okay. but you're, you're characterizing what he said as do everything. Let me, let me, yeah, he like can't panic. Can't and that's panic, not what we're doing. Can't panic and buy everything on the market, but I think that we're talking about security guard, you're talking about hiring a specialist, and again, I'm not criticizing the, the elements. I'm saying hiring a specialist, security greetings, security greeters, Upgrading security cameras, special freezing on metric well, schools. We haven't decided to do all that. I understand, but what I'm asking is, why not bring in the specialist first and then say, okay, here, here are my recommendations, or here from the and town on the 16th. Can I answer the question? Sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. The recommendation and the way the special three initiative began was upon the recommendation of our police chief, and so our police chief began with that recommendation last year. He and I began a conversation. He went back to the municipal officials. I went back to the Board of Education. And that's how we started with the special threes on the middle school level. And during this year, both he and I have been monitoring the success or the effectiveness of the special threes. We're both convinced that the special threes that we have on the middle school level are working well. He came to us with the idea of special threes on the elementary <coughs> level that presented various options. So in terms of expertise that we have in the district, our first expert and group of experts are the Fairlawn Police Department. They support this fully. 
there are other safety initiatives that the Board of Ed and the municipality have put together, including sharing of data, cameras, and so on and so forth. But the initiative came not from the school end, from, but from the police end. And uh, he and I both agreed that it was worth pursuing. We still agreed to that, and he and I would both be available on April 16th to talk about it. When I refer to buying everything in, on the market, that is what other schools are doing. And although it may have a, a real good <coughs> component of it, my judgment is that I would rather have an officer in the school than any of the technology devices that are currently on the market. What have we left on the shelf, though? That's, I'm just looking at that. The security cameras, there's greeters, there's... No, I'm saying these are, all, these are all on the table, right? And that, that's what I'm saying, so... They're all on the yeah. table, but yeah. we haven't agreed to do them. No, I, and in I, fact, I, I, mean, I think it seems to me like, and we'll go over this in a minute, uh, yeah. cameras are out, the greeters are out. And half of the mental health... Well, he's just talking about security. Well, we had discussed earlier, I, I can't remember when you came in or, or not, is that my recommendation was to take a look at the safety issues in particular four, five, and six. And I had suggested that we move in the direction, as several board members had suggested as well, of having the school safety specialist and director who could then in the future take a look at our security breeders, the effectiveness of that, rearrange them, make recommendations, as well as in the field of security cameras have somebody who's a law enforcement specialist who would then be working for us to make those recommendations. So just to, just to recap, the item number two, the special threes, have been recommended by the Fairwell Police Department. We've been now really in our second year of that endeavor. And then the four, five, and six came internally from board members and, and administrators as options. So in terms of the conversation tonight, my understanding is that we had taken four and five off of the table. However, six would stay to provide guidance for the development of security initiatives in the future. I think that that's what I had heard. I mean, we didn't have a straw poll, but I think that that's the direction. But I just want you to know that when I have a question about security, my first call is to the Fairlawn Police. And that they have always responded very, very quickly, and, and I feel good about recommendations that I hear coming out of law enforcement people that we know. Anything else there? Okay. Any other members of the audience? Uh, yes. Um, What's your name? Anne Marie Covell. Thank um, you. So I have a question. With the mental health piece, you're saying you cut out $120,000 out of that? Mm -hmm. well, it's not a cut, it's just maybe right. you know, it from 360 to around 220. Right. Ballpark. So basically that's 75 cents to not have, you know, or a little bit more, mm -hmm. to not have the experts that Care Plus is. I know you have young kids and a lot of you have older kids. I'm deep in it and we need it in this district. Mm -hmm. And to not have it at the middle school and high school where these kids need it most? No, we're there. it's going to actually increase no, I know. at the middle school and the high it school. Needs it. Yeah, more. Yeah, it yeah, needs absolutely. the increase. Those are the kids that are coming in and shooting their classmates. And if you can identify them in middle school or in high school, it's, a do it's like less than a dollar. 39 cents. So it's like 50 cents probably, right, Bert? I, I don't know. I just think it's very important. I mean, I would do what you guys said, get rid of the, get the safety experts, let them tell you that stuff to do. But, and then as far as the technology, I agree with Jeff. We need technology. These kids are told not to use their phones when they have to look something up or work on a project. They're using their phones because they don't get internet. I mean, my daughter brings her, she has a Microsoft Surface, she can't connect. So she has, she's using a phone that most of the time they're told to put away or, you know, it's very confusing. But they're using their data, they're using, it, it's kind of crazy. Just for the record, I support the initiative with our technology program. It is much needed. 
Uh, I have been involved with one-to-one -one initiatives in two other districts, and what I can tell you is step one is infrastructure. So unless we are able to address infrastructure in the district, don't even be thinking about one-to-one -one because we'll be spending money on devices that are not going to run. So we need to upgrade this infrastructure. And I feel like we've done that in the past. Like, I feel like, you know, younger, when my daughter was in elementary, they got new computers. But when they went to do, you know, park testing, it all, it didn't work. You know, that was the first well, year. Well, basically, our, we have our existing infrastructure, and every year we keep adding additional yeah. devices. And so that, again, I think is our Achilles heel in yeah. that sense, is that we can't keep adding on the existing infrastructure without, right. without getting involved with the infrastructure itself. Right. It's like Where was it? I'll get back to the car. But it's got to be quick. David, let's There's a quick, a quick question um, for those. When we upgraded, when we started doing park on the computers, wasn't there a big infrastructure upgrade at that point? And was that just not taken far enough? And I know that's not a question for you, but... Um, any of those people who are on the board who could I mean, I can that. answer that. There was, an there was an infrastructure, but again, park testing was now 14, 15 school year. So I can say, you know, we, we had purchased wireless access points. There was two different companies that they went with. The company that they went with is now out of business. The company that they didn't go with was bought out by Cisco. So we have wireless access point devices that are now four years old. They're supposed to support 25 designs devices, we know that when they hit 20 devices, it starts to slow down. Um, we put in a lot of data drops for park, and that was a huge push in our infrastructure. But again, it's 14, 15, sure. so you think about in 1415, where did you have the iPhone 3, yeah, sure. no, no, I mean, right? So here we are now, and um, technology continues to advance. Sure. No you know, really quickly. So there was that for, for the specifics of park testing, which was, a met, which was to be done in large group areas. So we put a ton of data drops in libraries and cafeterias, so not necessarily in every single classroom, because sure. that wasn't what the format was at the time. Emily, real quick. Uh, if we're not prepared to spend all that 400000 within the next school year, because we're still figuring out what's the best route to go, can that money be carried over or does it need to be all spent? I, it can be carried over. We've had the discussions in the technology about having a technology audit. So for me, the idea would be we'll do the technology audit, find out what it is we need. As long as we have an idea by, you know, towards the end of the year, we can use it. If we don't use it, it goes into capital reserves or it goes into surplus. So okay. it's not like it ever just goes away. Because I am a little bit concerned that that figure was just based on like kind of an uh, informal estimate. It was absolutely an informal estimate. So at this point, again, the per so I just want to kind of bring everybody back. Tonight what we're looking at is what's the monthly tax impact that we're comfortable with voting on on Monday. <coughs> so Monday night we'll take an action on, a, on, a, on an actual budget, I'll send it to the county. The final budget is not till April 26th. So we'll have our shared service meeting April 16th. We'll have some more information in between then. If there is something that we want to change at that point, we certainly still can do that. When are you going to find out the state aid impact on that? I have found out the state yeah, aid so impact. But it has not, you haven't reduced it according to that amount. Oh, you're saying the new right, one? Right, right. Oh, so what the gentleman had said to me, I'm sorry, um, that he is going to contact me direct, directly when it's finalized, and he knows it would be in the next couple weeks. So after we do this, but in between, before our April 26th. But you don't know dollar wise how much no, loss it No, I have no idea. No estimation? No estimation whatsoever. I don't have that right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Okay, so any members of the audience? Dawn. Uh, Dawn Ebner. Um, I have several items to um, address, talk about. Um, first, the, probably the easiest one is number seven. Um, the technology, I, you know, I'm a teacher and we need technology improvement and, and that's what I can say about that. It's, it's, it's imminent, it's definitely something that needs to be done. Um, as far as um, number two, um, and, and relative to most of the security items up there, 
I will tell you that on behalf of the Teachers Association that that is something that we are definitely looking for and that is some, something that definitely um, comes up in every um, topic of conversation, every meeting that takes place with the teachers for the security of the students as well as the staff. Even the elementary teachers. Even the elementary, yeah, and, and probably at this point even more so for the elementary than, than the other ones. Um, now, um, to address some of the items um, specifically, uh, and then I'll get to the mental health thing after this. Um, if we, if, and I believe this, this is the case, let's say you hire, let's say you do number five, six, two, five, and six, let's say you do all those, and um, next year, the school safety specialist says, hey, listen, we don't need $120,000 for the security greeters at each building. Um, all you need to do is spend 60000 on that. That could change in the future, right? So, okay, so we could put these people in place, and if the security, uh, the, safe, the school safety specialist says we don't need them, then that could change next year. So I don't see why you would not um, add the security in the buildings as needed. Um, or, or, you know, I mean, that, that's the utmost... I mean, no matter what, in my classroom, I want my kids to learn, I want my kids to do the things that I expect them to do, all that kind of stuff, but the utmost important to myself um, and all the other teachers in the district is the safety of the students in the building. That's number one and, and most paramount. Um, and like I said, education is, is, you know, obviously very, very important, but number one is the safety of people there, so. Um, and then along with that, um, number five, uh, if... Um, if you cannot agree to hire these people at $120,000, uh, I would um, implore the um, board to at least consider number five, even if it were a part-time um, during the high traffic times during the year, uh, whether that be during parent conference time, um, at the time of, and, and we actually had a conversation about this, um, if, if voting uh, remains in school buildings during when, when <coughs> buildings are open for voting, when they're open for um, American Education Week. Um, so at least we have some other um, adults and eyes that are not worried about, and I mean, the secretary's got a lot to do on their plate and worry about, you know, getting my reports done, getting the attendance done, all that stuff. Oh, now I gotta see and, and see this person to buzz in. It's just another added responsibility um, for the uh, secretary, it's not, and, or whoever is in the building. Like at the high school, we have separate people who are taking care of that. It's not the office personnel trying to handle people coming in and out of the building. So um, I definitely see a need for that. Number two, um, definitely, no question in my mind, number, number two should take place. Uh, and once again, I, I know some of you have brought up, well, what if this school safety specialist says we don't need them? Well, we could change that for the following year, if, if that if need be. Um, I, I don't see how um, having any extra people available um, would not be behoove the board. And I know um, Mr. Spindale brought up about the fact that things could happen outside the building also. You are 100% accurate, but that does, it, does that mean we compromise the inside of the building just because we don't have an outside plan right now? I don't think that that should be the case. I also stated that we should work on that outside plan. Right, right. I agree. I 100% agree. But I don't say, I don't think that we should not have the inside because we don't have the outside set. Um, as far as the uh, security cameras go, um, I do agree with probably most of the people here that that is probably an item that could be put on hold until we have more research and hear from the school safety specialists because there are at least security cameras in place. And if we have the other um, special threes and the greeters in the building, those people would also be an extra set of eyes besides cameras. Cameras are not going to respond in the event of an emergency. Will it get people there in a short period of time? Absolutely, but having somebody in the building is somebody who can immediately respond, not just a camera looking at what's going on. So those are so number <coughs> as, as far as the association goes and me personally goes number two five six are um, should be highly highly um, recommended on behalf of the association and myself um, to the board to take care of number seven is definitely a need uh, there's no question about that and then finally. Um, relative to number three, the mental health for the high school and middle school. And Elise actually um, touched on this. I'm not really sure why we are not hiring um, people um, as board um, 
as, as um, employees of the board as opposed to going to these um, um, other organizations. And I know that they do have expertise in some areas. Um, and um, somebody had mentioned the fact that um, there's better supervisory oversight um, with these individuals. But we just restructured, if I'm not mistaken, this past year, we just restructured our special education um, program. And now we have, um, and I know it's not just special education, but CST and um, definitely plays a role in, in all of that that's happening. But we just added, um, thankfully, um, Assistant Superintendent of Special Education, um, as well as, um, you know, the two um, uh, middle school, uh, elementary and a uh, secondary level um, individual to also assist with that. So if we hired somebody um, in-house, um, I would think that we would probably have the capability for some oversight there. And um, I, I believe our child study teams in th throughout the district um, are high quality individuals. And I think that we could you know, get somebody else directly on staff. Those, not saying that people don't buy in you know, as, as an outside source, but you have um, people who are much more um, involved in the community, um, the school community directly if they're an in-house person. So I would um, recommend instead of spending the money um, to Care Plus or to Effective School Solutions, I believe that's right, Effective School yes. Solutions, mm -hmm. say that right, um, that we get people um, that the board hires and, and has them um, as, as board employees as opposed to reaching out to other organizations. Uh, because we have high, and I'm sure most of you are very well aware of the high quality individuals that we have in house, and I certainly think we can get more of those as opposed to reaching out to other people to give us expertise. We have expertise, and I think we can continue the expertise if we, which you very well do, hire you know people at the top of their uh, top of their game for a variety of positions in, in the district. So I would recommend not to not um, address the mental health, but to get somebody in house to help address the mental health. And I think that's all I've got to say, unless anybody has any questions for me. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you, Don. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I think everybody's had a chance to speak who wanted to, um, so we have to figure out what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. What? You did? Oh, yeah, Ron. Forgot you walked in. Okay. <laughs> I saw you come in, but then I forgot. Um, <clears throat> Want to add anything? Well, yeah, I do. Um, I hear what certain people are saying about security. I tell you something, um, with two school shootings in the last week, I got about 25 emails and 17 cell phone calls about panicking from teachers in this district and people that work in this district and parents. They're nervous, okay? And I think it is our responsibility to protect these children, okay? And there's no price on a child. That's the way I look at it. People can disagree with me. That's the way I feel. Um, I... Uh, I understand this to the cameras. I think we can wait. I do want to hear from the so, uh, school safety director. A special threes, I'm all for. Um, I know certain people, you know, research everything else like that. I think right now a parent doesn't want to hear about that. They want to hear that they know that their child is covered and safe. That's it. Like the other day, there was one, and there was a resource officer there, and he took care of it. Both done. That's it. End of story. Okay. And I, I don't, I, I don't think any, any parent, and you know, we're all parents in here, wants to hear about anything other than if you're trying to say. Um, this technology, um, I would like to get it. I absolutely would love to see. Uh, I've spoken to Jeff, I agree with it. I, I'm 100% on board. But I do not like just throwing numbers out there. I'd like to see an audit because it might not be that much. It might be more. But I definitely think it's something that we need to do. It's absolutely we have to upgrade it. You know, David, just to answer a question to you too, a lot of things with park were destined just for park, which every school district got hit with lovely thank you from the government and by the way we're not giving you a nickel to do it so that's kind of sad that, that the government is like that um and as far as the last thing is Dawn, you bring up a very good point um i agree with you if we can get and we do have very uh, competent people in our district um i i look at it as that if we have people we can hire that and again it's always looking at the cost of privatizing, I'll use the word, and in-house. You know, if we're going to get that same quality and we can save some money, absolutely. But I absolutely think it is magnitudely needed to have that in the high school and in the middle schools. And I can speak from experience with people that I know that they're, they're children. And, and I don't know, just real quick, that's all I wrote. 
than anybody here with the story of the guy that just shot the, the, the two kids. Did you hear what it was all about? They had severe pro personal problems. It was not a hate, it was nothing. It was He had severe problems and nobody did talk to him. Right there it tells this country mental illness is a big problem. So we need to address that one way or another. So that's how I feel about it. Thank you, Ron. Okay, why don't we, I want to take this one at a time to see how everybody was. Everybody's good with number one and number two, am I correct? Now let's do. Do you want to do a thumbs up? Yeah, let's do a thumbs okay. up. Number one. Okay. Number two. Number three. Number three, Nick's Compromise 220. Number four, it sounds to me like we can wait on the cameras. Everybody agree we can wait on the cameras? Yes. We're voting to wait on the cameras. Yeah. Uh, yes. Cameras are out. Wait on the cameras. Okay. okay. Wait, on, wait the on the cameras. Okay. Yeah. Number five, now let's just wait before we start. I was ready to blow this off till like we're yeah. done. So that, don't, don't take it, you know, don't get your head on the swell. I think we should have something in there. Maybe not the whole 120, but I think we should have something in there in case the guy says, Hey, you should do this. So I'm thinking maybe you put 60 in there. Okay. So like even if it's just you know 7:30 to 8:30 or you know at or particular time. time. So yeah. high traffic time. So I'm saying, and it, you see, up or down, security greeters. Well, let's do it at 60k. That's what I say. What? I just wanted to say I didn't look at it from from the angle of Dawn saying about the secretaries, how they're, you know, in the course of the day at the busy, busy times, and it's like, especially the voting, the this, the that. You know, they're just going like this because they're trying to do their regular job. If we could take some of the load off of them so that somebody is actually looking, and I'm not saying they're not doing their job, I'm just saying that somebody is, is fixated on, on, <coughs> on like, I, I didn't look at it from Dawn's angle until she, she said it. And, and should it really be their responsibility, safe, no, school safety, it really should not be their responsibility. That's, if you think about it, it's really entirely unfair for them to put that on us. So so I, I, I need to, I need to just say that if you cut it, yeah. you're, you're cutting head count, which means that you won't cover each school. So how do you... Or, but, well, what was the 120 was going to be how many hours a day per school? I'm not, I don't... Remember how many hours it might be like 27 half and a half, 27 hours a week for all of the schools that would cover it. Okay. Yeah. All right, Ron. So, all right, this person is this going to be, I guess, like a layperson type person they're going to hire, and their job is just going to be like I'm, what I'm saying is like in Wayne where I work, you, you get in the front door, then you got to stop at one person. Is that the person that's going to be? Like they got a sign, I got a sign there, then I got to go to the office, I got a sign there. But the other question I have, is there going to be um, mandatory that whoever, like if I walk in and I'm going to meet somebody, I'm, I'm walking in to meet Nick, that he's got to meet me where I am. Yeah. You do not allow that person to walk around the building. No, I, I mean, I'm saying we're all going like this. I mean, that's something that we got to be because I'm, I'm really adamant about that. Because I got to tell you something. I mean, Wayne, years ago, I walked in and I was like, yeah, I gotta go upstairs. I could have went anywhere I wanted at that school, and that's scary. And I went right back to the superintendent about it. So, um, so we're I'm working on a lot of these procedures that we currently I know have. We and so, for me to tell you yes definitively, I'm not gonna say yes 100 percent. But we are. We had this conversation the other day. We're talking about a central office meeting with our administrative team and saying. What is it like when somebody comes into the building? How are we going to address that so that you're standing there and you have to get from point A to point B? Are you going on your own? Or are we having somebody come and meet you? Are you waiting with the greeter? So we hear you loud and clear, and we're definitely looking at that and looking to have <coughs> something implemented for us up there. I, I, I don't have no problem. I think we should just cut it here for right now. And we'll work figure something out. You should cut it. You should cut it. I, I believe we should. Uh, again, who are these greeters going to be? Are they going to be teachers who have a prep that want to do this at that time? No. Are they going to be specially no, no. hired these are, these individuals? Are they're hired individuals that we already have, some in the district, and they're part-time people that work for us, okay. and this is their job. That's okay. it. I will just say again, I feel like we should let the 
wait a year. Just let the school safety director actually give us a number and a plan and answer all these questions and do it right. I understand the point, like, you can do it wrong and then cut back later if you don't need it, but it's really hard once something is in place. It's harder to change it than just prevent any issues from the first place to get it right. So I would just say that we should not go down that road and just wait a year to get a good plan in place for these positions in our schools. So what's the, so what the are we readers? thumbing? Well, we're thumbing greeters, but at 60 grand, <coughs> we have the money there to get started. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Are you can't. I don't know how many that is. I only see two, three. Oh, it's, it's the secretary's responsibility to look at the camera right now. It is, and if that changes, that could change. And, and I agree that that high traffic times or certain times. I mean, there's definitely you know they take licenses and do ribbon. You know, I mean, there's there's so many things that could be done at the mm -hmm. at the level of like a security specialist. You know, coming in and, and giving you giving you the options. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that was that was yes. Number six, school safety specialist director in out. Okay. Number seven, it was everybody. Number seven, uh, technology infrastructure upgrades. Okay. All right. So. So what is the capital reserve? Oh yeah, capital reserve. Okay. I'm going to say. I'm going to say. I don't think ten, taking ten percent of cap reserve is going to hurt us. I really don't. You still have five point four million dollars. So I'm saying, who's for six hundred thousand dollars out of cap reserve to pay towards reducing the tax? Okay. Okay. I mean, if we're adding stuff in just to throw this out there, why not take out nine hundred thousand? Because we just voted on six. Okay. I'm just asking. <laughs> <laughs> Rhetorically. Yeah. 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 That's true. We didn't vote. It's just this straw. I'm good with 10%. Maybe more than that. Okay. Okay. All right. Look, can you give us the numbers that we just voted on? I have a pretty good idea, but I want to hear from the first. It's going to be like 1.06 or something. Like that 1.04. Yes. How much money do we save? Today? All right. Give her a minute. Give her a minute. Can I ask you a question or no? Yeah. Um, relative to number three, is um, that's the um, mental health? Is it a consideration not to have Care Plus or effective school solutions? Is that a consideration? the money now. Um, that, that's my, I, I didn't know if the, you were voting on Care Plus and effective school. We're, no. we're voting on the money. Just the money right now. Yeah. Voting on the okay. money. If, if okay. Nick comes back to us and says, if Nick comes back to us and says, hey, listen, I looked at it, and it's better to do it the way Dawn said, then we'll say it. But we have to see what Nick and Natalie have to say. I have a quick question. I, sure. So, like, if the security person comes in and suggests some things that, you know, they feel that it needs to be done like right away. Is there somewhere you can take it from if we don't have the money? Yeah, yeah we have we have one point nine million dollars of surplus. So if we need a hundred thousand dollars to implement a security measure right away that he believes has to be done, right. that's what surplus is for. Yeah. Or unencumbered. I mean, some of the schools are set up a little weird, like when you go in, you have to kinda of go far before someone sees you and mm -hmm. You wonder if they'll this look at that and change that. Yeah. 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 All right. So. Yeah, but we're waiting for work to give us. Oh. Yeah.
Okay, so the final, the final monthly tax impact is $20.40, approximately. We're almost at that $19.99 there. $19.99. You can have it for $19.60. Okay. Do I get a bowl of soup with that also? $20.40. Yeah, well, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe the governor will come through. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Okay. All right. So we're good. Um, yeah. No, no action. So moved. Second. Yep. Thank you. Uh, Elise and uh, Jeff. All in favor, recess? Aye. 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 Aye.